Our first step into dimensionality reduction involves a projection process called principal component analysis. And this is a technique that's been used for a very long time in a whole variety of different areas. Fundamentally, you can think of it as an incremental process. And the idea is that we look at the distribution of all of the uh, points that we have in our data set within this n-dimensional feature space. And we first identify the one axis uh, along which we see the largest uh, variance within this feature space. Now this axis doesn't have to be parallel to one of the feature dimensions. It can actually be uh, along multiple feature dimensions. So once we've identified this axis, then what we can do is su essentially subtract out the variance of the data along that, uh, that axis. And then that, that gives us a uh, distribution of points in an n minus one dimensional space. And then we can repeat this process. So let's take a look at how this might work in a two-dimensional space. All right, so let's imagine that we have a set of points within a feature space. So here is our uh, x0 and x1 feature space. So it's a two-dimensional feature space. And, and if we sample from the universe of all possible uh, samples, then, for example, we might end up with a set of points that say fall along uh, this uh, dimension here. Now what's interesting about this set of points is that we're definitely not taking a uniform sample or uh, a, a full two-dimensional uh, sample over this uh, feature space. And instead, most of these points really fall along one particular dimension, which is this diagonal uh, along here. So, so let's, let's go ahead and identify that uh, diagonal. So this is, the, this is the direction along which we see the most uh, variance across all of our points. So that's a, a pretty good approximation to that. Um, actually, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. There we go. So now that's, that's running essentially down the, the, the middle of those points. And what's, what's interesting is that, of course, some of these points fall very near to that purple line, uh, but other points fall a little bit off of that, uh, off of that line. And, and what we can do is uh, imagine, say, projecting each of these points onto the purple line. So with uh, principal component analysis, this is just a simple perpendicular uh, projection. So this point, uh, this point over here, that gets projected onto the purple line at that point right there. Uh, this point uh, over here, that gets projected onto the purple line uh, that's, that's right there. And, and likewise, likewise, we can walk down all of these points. So this one gets projected here. Um, this one doesn't, isn't very far. This one's a little bit further. So it gets projected onto uh, the purple line. Now we can, uh, think of this purple line as an axis in and of itself. So imagine taking this line with all of the projected points onto it and uh, flipping it over. So we're gonna flip it over like this. And that takes us onto uh, another uh, axis. In this case, it is just a single uh, axis. So we'll call this uh, X, X2 just to be, uh, distinguish us from uh, zero and one. And, and the points all fall along, uh, along this uh, axis. So, so this, this point here, its projection say might be uh, this location here. Uh, there was another point uh, just a little bit further along uh, right there that, that falls right near it. Uh, the next point, oops. I'm moving from uh, upper uh, left to lower right here. So the next point is this one here, and there's another one right there. Those sort of fall on this line uh, here and here. And then there's a, a several more, one, two, uh, three, and then one a little bit further out, um, et cetera. So I'm, I'm now just gonna draw in some more points. And the last points on the 
uh, these two here might fall at, at this point here. So, so what's interesting is that we've taken uh, a set of points that we've described with two coordinates, x0 and x1, and we've transformed them uh, into a coordinate system where we have just one descriptor, and that is the distance along x2. This, this point here along x2 might, might be uh, r0, uh, and, and from there I can talk about uh, where this point is relative to zero. So that's sitting at one, this one is sitting at two, this is sitting at three, um, this is 4.3, something along those lines. So, so we've gone from x0, x1, uh, to uh, a description that is just x2. Now this is sort of a trivial example uh, in that we're only going from two dimensions to one dimension, uh, but it certainly is a lot easier to draw. So this transformation process that takes us from here to here, that is just a linear projection. And as it turns out, if we, uh, we, we can invert this process here back over to this original space. So what, what that looks like, uh, I had a point I had a point, say, uh, over here that corresponded in the original projection. It came from right here. When I bring it back, so that was this direction here. When I bring it back through another linear transformation, it actually gets dropped right onto this uh, purple axis. So this process of uh, encoding our uh, points in this lower dimensional space. Um, first off, we can invert it. We can go back the other direction, but there is a, a certain amount of loss of uh, information, and that corresponds to this distance here between uh, that the the point on the purple curve and the corresponding uh, the original point that we started with. So, so anytime we do this dimensionality reduction, we necessarily have some degree of loss of information, but relatively, we've actually managed to preserve in this example quite a bit of the uh, information as to where these points are in our two-dimensional space. Uh, another term that you're going to see for this distance here, this is, this is our uh, residual. Um, let's actually do another example where we have bigger residuals. This will be e make it easier to, to draw some other things. So here's our original space defined over x0 and x1. And let's imagine we have some points here and uh, some points uh, along here as well. Actually, all right, let me make those real, or cl something closer to points rather than scratches. Okay, so, so here, uh, defining the, the primary dimension of variance, it's actually very similar to what we saw before. Uh, and that dimension sits in this case, right, right about uh, along in here. And, and if we project this into our one dimensional space, that's our X2 space, what's interesting here is that we've got this, this cluster here uh, and then this other cluster here with, with a gap in between the two clusters. And, and those uh, clusters are, in some sense, preserved in this projected space. So, so these end up mapping over here, these end up mapping uh, over here. So we might end up with a whole bunch of points uh, right here, but then we have a, a gap and some other set of points over here. So in this compressed representation, we're, we are actually preserving some important aspects of the topology, and in particular, the, the fact that there's that, that gap in between. Again, when we, when we take our uh, compressed representation and bring it back into our original space, all of these points now fall uh, right along the purple curve. So, so this point goes to here, this point goes to here, uh, et cetera. So I purposely drew this particular picture so that we have a lot more variance uh, along the dimension that, uh, that is not covered by uh, our first principal component. So we've, we have some other variants along this dimension. So one thing that we can do is imagine uh, subtracting out 
any variation along here. And if we do that, then uh, what we're left with is a set of uh, a set of points along a perpendicular axis. So that orange is is perpendicular to our is perpendicular to our purple. And now imagine taking uh, each of these points and dropping it onto the original uh, down to the orange point. So that point gets dropped here. This point here gets dropped to to this point here. This point here gets dropped here. If we if we draw in all of these uh, points onto the orange axis, then what we uh, end up with is uh, a whole set of uh, points again, a whole pile of points. But one thing that's interesting is that the range of our points uh, on this uh, orange axis is substat substantially smaller than the set of points along uh, this uh, first principal component. So we'd refer to this as our first principal component, and this is our uh, second principal component. With our two-dimensional space, we can't go any further, but in a much larger dimensional space, our first principal component is going to be responsible for the most variation possible, and our second principal component is going to be responsible for describing variance, but it will be less variance than our first principal component. And then our third principal component will pick up some more variance, but again, less. And at some point in time, we'll, we'll get to a point where uh, all the, of the variance or most of the variance is already accounted for. And, and so this is something that we're, we'll look at uh, when we start doing one of our examples. All right, so that's a little bit of intuition about uh, principal components. And now it's time to give uh, our Python code uh, a little bit of a try. So we're first going to do an example with, uh, with just some simple two-dimensional data along the same lines that we've been talking about here. And then we'll take a look at what we can learn about our brain machine interface data. 